Hey everyone, it's David here again. Um, I'm a little bit late today, but I can't be helped. I uh, couldn't figure out something simple to talk about. Um, a lot of the stuff that's going on online specifically to do with trans stuff is sort of big and you know needs a lot of time and words and thinking and plotting to, to say anything. And I spent most of the day trying to figure out what I wanted to say and realized it's sort of it's the sort of stuff that takes more than one episode, if you know what I mean. Um, it's the sort of thing that if I did a video on the issues at the moment that are, are up for me, um, it would probably be like an hour, an hour long video and that's boring. So um, I asked various people um, online if they had a question for TSU that um, I could discuss in a video and my wonderful friend Betha offered me this question in a culture where gender has little impact why do people wear such rigid rigidly gendered clothing um, now if you're not familiar with TSU you probably need context um, in TSU I created a species and culture and stuff that had has three genders and three sexes base base genders and sexes um, with the intention of opening it up as much as possible making the words for the three different sexes be completely different to the three genders <clears throat> and a part of that process in order to you know bring in trans and non-binary people as much as I can into the universe, into the story where they're safe and able to be who they want to be, who they are without, you know, assholes telling them they're not allowed to be who they are I created a, a convention um, for wearing clothes uh, I have brought the pussycat it's a little pussycat Teddy that I was given a while back. I mostly chose her because he's got a big belly, big long stomach. Now in TSU, um, I basically had this idea that if we split gender and sex almost separate, which is why sex characteristics have a different name. They're actually in Ranka, so that they're completely separate. Um, so unless you're, you know, up on the the language and the words and stuff, if you can find the character files with their sex and gender on them, you'll only recognize the gender. Um, that's deliberate because their sex actually doesn't particularly matter other than in the context of who has babies or who doesn't have babies or whatever. But um, so I decided to make, I, I spent a lot of time trying to design some way that individuals can declare their gender without without declaring their gender if you will and without society going oh look you've got tits therefore you're female or oh look you don't therefore you're male or whatever it, it had to be a trait that was firstly under control of the individual and secondly not under control of society Society didn't tell people who they were. The people told society who they were. So I had this idea for clothing with the position of, a, of the waist, the line of the waist, or a sash. Because originally, in the most formal kind of parts of the culture that I specifically designed, people of high rank wear a particular kind of clothing, which is a little bit like a kimono. Not quite, but enough for your brain to think of it so you know on a kimono you get the big fat sash around your stomach and there's two different styles for male and female um, <clears throat> I thought well if we do it sort of that way and imagine the position of the sash would define the gender so on the teddy <clears throat> you get the sash and if it's right under the armpits, or if you've got breasts under the breasts, that's that's a woman. 
That's a person declaring that they would like to have female pronouns. And if you put it right at the bottom, either across the hips or waist, depending on what body shape you've got, that <clears throat> would be male. And halfway between the two, across the middle, is androgen. Or in our case, it would probably be the, our version of non-binary. Although it's technically their third gender, or their first gender. Um, and this idea was in order to give power to the individual putting the clothes on. So if they're gender fluid, they can put on clothes and put the sash wherever they needed to be for that day. And society would be trained by the majority belief, like it's a normal thing, that wherever the sash or the, uh, the line of the waist is, or looks like, that would define the gender. So if you saw someone with a high high waistline or a, a sash or a belt, um, you know, like those baby doll dresses and the, the, there's a line under the breast and it sort of flares out from there. That would specifically be female, be woman. That person would be a woman and require female pronouns. Um, and I also defined that if they didn't have a sash and their shirt went past like crotch level, where it's basically the length of like a mini skirt, um, that would be their non-trinary. Their version of our non-binary, but it's non-trinary. So then people use they them. So then there's no need for for um, you know name badges with pronouns on them or hats or shirts or any other kind of declar declarative sort of thing. Because I don't know about you, but when I've gone to something when someone's you know tried to be inclusive and asked everyone to say their their pronouns, it sort of makes it more awkward. Um, Sometimes it's not a safe environment to just say, oh, by the way, you can either call me he or they. I'm cool with either. Um, sometimes you just want to hide. Like, I, I do. I want to hide a lot because sometimes it's just not safe. And it just it feels so awkward. And I'm sure in the future there might be other ways of um, doing a circle of declaring name and pronouns um, that's less sort of awkward. But at the moment it's it's... You potentially out yourself to potentially hostile people. And it's the non-binary folk, the non-passing folk, who are at the most risk in this particular situation. It just makes me uncomfortable. So I thought, okay, there has to be another way of declaring your gender. Um, <clears throat> and there has to be a way of it being used by society easily and quickly. So there's none of that, mm, it's such a pain in the ass, mm. Um, that so many people whine about. Um, it has to be simple. And I, I'm not sure why that's considered strict, but that's okay. Um, they have, within the Aramanan, the design of the Aramanan species, There, I've deliberately separated the sex and gender because even though they have a history of it being the same a long time ago, they've already gone through what we're going through right now, through a, a revolution, cultural revolution of understanding that gender is, is much more complicated than we've been taught in the past. And so to separate the two means that there's no, it's not a big deal if your so-called sex doesn't match your so-called gender because there isn't a matching. There's, there's no matching. You have in the gender with pronouns is androgen, female, male. And in the sex you have um, Adan, Asana and Akan. Um, and that's deliberate 
deliberately uh, not immediately obvious because what's actually important to the character is their gender their emotional spiritual and mental gender their identity their bits whether they have them or not is irrelevant to the discourse like hawk is a hermaphrodite so if they had their version of transphobia he wouldn't be allowed to be a he he'd be a trans man because he's actually a hermaphrodite um, uh, which is a damn sex heron and I'll go into the why they're named that much much later because it's a really long story um, but because what bits he does and does not have are actually irrelevant to the story it's not particularly mentioned I mention it once I think possibly twice in the series so far um, because he's a dude he's a guy he's a man it doesn't matter what bits he does and does not have um, and most of the other characters who have that so-called mismatch I don't talk about them um, partially because I don't I haven't actually designed many specifically many of the characters to have this so-called mismatch but um, it's also not a thing they don't everyone notices what sex each other is but it doesn't actually mean anything about who that person is their gender their identity their interests their value as a person have nothing to do with their genitals or their secondary sex characteristics and so I've written it specifically to just ignore mostly ignore the sex characteristics and it goes back to the clothes that they're wearing that they've declared their gender is it's deliberate um, I know it'll piss people off but fuck it um, <laughs> excuse me swearing I don't really care what people that sort of cisgender folk will get some cisgender folk will get annoyed because TSU is for those who have experienced oppression and that of course includes trans people um, now I've gone off topic I always do that <clears throat> sorry I've got notes here um, so when my friend asked me the, this question about why do people wear such rigidly gendered clothing my first thought of course was it's rigid um, I don't think of it as rigid I mean our clothing conventions are really a lot more rigid I mean have you ever walked into like the so-called men's clothes section and then the so-called women's section have you ever noticed how really boring the men's section are it's all sort of t-shirts and shirts with collars and they're all dull dark blue or green colors you know or brown or white or gray there's no glitter there's no sequins there's no bright yellow you have no idea how hard it has been to try and find colored shirts that aren't you know played or stripy blue or whatever um, so our, our our clothing is pretty strict at least to me um, so it's just having the sash or the visual waistline isn't in my mind too strict but maybe I'm missing something um, but I also had this idea that it is sort of a problem because it's still gendered clothing um, even though it's just a sash it's still gendered and therefore it's still sort of telling people what to wear but the thing is <clears throat> we have to have something the universe of TSU is written by a person who's grown up and been socialized to talk about gender to think other people in the context of gender and if we want to tell stories 
to an audience with a similar sort of programming, a similar sort of cultural backdrop, there has to be some some kind of gender. You can't just... Well, you can. You can completely obliterate gender entirely. But as a writer, I'm aware that when you're writing, you have to also think about your audience, your readers. And if a world is too alien, the reader can't attach to the character. They can't emotionally connect, see themselves in that character. So we have to have similarities. I mean, technically, the Ottoman species is an alien species. They're not humans. I write them as humans um, and conveniently don't describe the parts of their anatomy that don't actually match humans. Like, I think you might notice I'd never describe ears, for example. Um, may not even describe noses. Because they are aliens, but the story is written in such a way that I'm sort of bringing the alienness away and bringing just the human aspects of the Ottoman species into the front so that human readers can interact with them, can emotionally attach to them, can recognize them as people. And so if they're too far from peopleness, recognizable peopleness, people won't connect with them. <clears throat> and however much I would love to figure out how to write a completely genderless society, firstly, it's really hard to write using gender neutral pronouns for everyone. If you use they them for every single person in a scene, it, it it's a nightmare. So from a technical standpoint, it's a pain in the ass. But from an emotional standpoint, it's also too difficult. And I'm sure there'll be a future where people are aware enough of different ways of viewing people and, and culturally more enlightened, if you will, I don't know. There'll probably be a future when someone will look back and go, oh, that person was so old fashioned. But I have to work with what is right now or as close to now as I can get, because now is always you know, the now that I said before is now in the past. And there's a new now. Um, so, the only way I could do it was to make a society that was much less strict in gender rules, must, much less strict in definitions and stereotypes and expectations. There is as far as I can create, no gendered violence. There is no one gender that's more superior or more dominant than another. It's just a bunch of people who are assholes and a bunch of people who aren't. It's not based on gender. But not having any gender at all would be really hard to write, really hard to read, really hard to relate to. and. The purpose isn't to make the writing hard. The purpose is to make the writing inclusive. Um, and so even though it's still gendered clothing, it's still gendered norms, gendered stereotypes to a degree, I hope they're low enough to open, they're loose enough to open things up for others, for gender non-diverse people, uh, gender diverse people. Um, without being sort of emotional and mental nonsense, if you will. We can still understand, we can still relate to it. So in this context, you can't really escape gender. Um, I've made it as loose as I can and as open as I can, but it still if you use a language that genders things and people, you still need to define what those words mean. Um, and until we can get a usable gender neutral pronoun, um, 
and no one can convince me that they them is a usable gender pronoun in prose. Verbally, fine, but um, not when you're writing, not if all the characters are um, NBs and you're trying to get them to talk. It'd be they said, they said, they said. You couldn't keep up with who's talking and where and what and whatever. It just, it's too hard. Um, <laughs> and it screws with my problem with grammar. <clears throat> Now, final thing on my list is that the idea with the, the sash, the sash placement, is that if the, the clothing, you know, fashions or norms or whatever, only discern gender by that sash or the waistline position, that means all genders can experience lots of different things that we in our society would associate with only womanhood or only manhood so a man can walk down the street in rainbow sequins and as long as his sash is low on his hips or on his waist society will still gender him as a male so you've got all of these beautiful ideas or beautiful options for creativity with your costume, with your clothes, with your shoes. A man could walk down the street in a dress and high heel shoes and makeup with big boofy hair and jewelry and necklaces and earrings and big red lips and all of the things that we would traditionally associate with femininity. But because his, the visual waistline or his sash is low, all of society will still gender him correctly will still empower his personal identity and that's actually one of the things that I've been finding a lot of difficulty with uh, transitioning is that while inside when I have a sense of gender it's male I don't identify with a lot of male clothing I mean other than I really want a suit I'd love a suit oh. um, <laughs> but I love color I love shiny sparkly things I love earrings I love well one earring I love I love the look of so many things that are associated with femininity but I'm still a dude regardless like who I am inside is who I am inside how I choose to present myself varies and the first time I went into a man's sort of department area of clothes to buy something I was just like there's blue there's black there's gray there's brown and there's stripy and there's that um like swan dry I don't know what that is in US terms you know colored boxes um like black and red one black box and a red box and a black like a checker or a a kilt sort of pattern whatever that's called and I just stood there and thought this is not interesting where's the color where's the like a lot of women's clothes have beautiful material like silks and satins and velvet and if a man wears, ve wears velvet even a vest he's sort of fancy you know not manly enough and it's I don't know if anyone else feels this way but I think it's a damn shame you've got all of these beautiful colors and clothes and uh, surfaces and materials and shapes and sizes and so many options for clothes and men end up wearing basically shorts and a sh t-shirt or short uh, shorts and pants or shorts and sh I'm confusing my words men only get a top like a shirt a t-shirt a long sleeve shirt or a like a collar shirt and pants or shorts and it's always sort of cotton and boring and dull colors and where's the joy in clothing it's one of the things the few times when I actually could get joy from uh, clothes shopping one of the things I actually liked about femininity was you got to experiment with so many kinds of clothes so many colors and shades and 
textures and shapes and shoes. Occasionally I miss the shoes, although I can't wear anything like high heely type. But, you know, big clumpy shoes and, and with buckles and shiny bits and colour and not to mention I can't actually wear men's shoes because my feet are too small, but um, I'm definitely a tall hobbit. Or a, in TSU terms, Cranon, but um, short, very short. There's no play, there's no joy, there's no dancing with colours in the mainstream masculinity for clothes or appearances or even hairdos. I mean, men get laughed at if they get if their hair is remotely long you know in school when like my brother had really long curly hair he had beautiful hair um he'd get teased he'd have little old ladies tell him you know his hair his beautiful hair was wasted on a boy and he should have been allowed or at least not bullied but he should have been able to enjoy his hair he should have been able to grow his hair without all the shitty comments. He should have been able to experiment with colours and shapes and I mean instead he had to get put into this little tiny box. I remember watching it thinking, this sucks. You know, at least women get to play with colour and shiny sparkly things that go in here or whatever. It's just a shame, you know? And under the system, people could... People could do what they wanted, experiment, and still be properly gendered. Still be identified as themselves by society. So I don't think it's rigid. Although it is specific. Anyway, I'm running out of space on my computer. <laughs> so I'm going to have to finish now. Um, hope everyone has a good week. <laughs>